35 years of mistakes has led to the development of the perfect business plan. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, the Sales Whisperer, your host. Today, we have Mr. Tom Poland, originally from New Zealand, hanging out in Australia. Now, he's the author of Leadsology, the Science of Being in Demand. Uh, Tom found me, uh, reached out, and uh, reviewed what he was up to and had him on the show right away. Uh, I've read his book now. I've got it here in my hands. I've been implementing what we discussed. Uh, he has shared some things with me um, off air that uh, has been quite instrumental, um, and I am taking massive action. The same thing I always tell you to do. Don't just listen to this. Listen and take notes. Listen and apply. Uh, if something you know resonates with you, go do it. Uh, I think you'll find some things in this episode that will resonate. Um, Tom is just a, a laid back guy. He had created a successful business. We talk about it, how he was traveling, and uh, it just you know wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And he kept tweaking and tinkering until he found a proven process to grow his business, to create the lifestyle that he wanted. And he shares that uh, in this interview. He shares it uh, in his book. And um, I recommend you pay close attention because this is a good one. Now let's bring on Tom. Tom Poland, all the way from Australia, author of Leadsology, the science of being in demand. Welcome to the sales podcast, man. How are you? Thanks for it. I'm a box of fluffy ducks. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to assume that means uh, you're as happy as a puppy with two Peters. Is it kind of the same thing? You look, it covers a multitude of experiences. <laughs> it can be sort of warm and fluffy or full of shit and feathers. Uh, <laughs> depending on how you wake up feeling, whether I had my espresso or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw this video. It was uh, if, if Australians had made uh, Star Wars. Have you seen that? No, I have not seen that. Uh, I'm going to have to find it. And they have... They have uh, the closed caption on it and all these sayings, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm having to look them up, but it's hilarious. <laughs> it's, um, it's a funny country. <laughs> oh man. Y'all just cut to the chase. I love it. All right. So let's cut to the chase. Shall we? Are you telling me, are you telling me it's scientific generating business is scientific? Is that we can well, make these irrational it, humans? Yeah, it is because do what you, we want them to do. Well, it, it's the science of being in demand. So okay. when, you, when you look at all the ways you can generate leads or you can create demand, uh, there's a bucket load of ways you can do it wrong that are either just flat out don't work or they're inefficient or they're expensive or they're complicated. You know, we all know Einstein said, you know, make a thing as simple as possible. Not simple not simple to the point that it doesn't work. But, but, and and the, the difficult part is making things simple and making them effective at the same time. So, yeah, there's a bit of a science to it because it's, it's, it's kind of like I say, it's like getting into a combination safe. You know, if you know the combination, it appears to be pretty simple. But if you don't, then it's really, really very difficult. So, yeah, the science of being in demand, there's a lot of twists and turns to it. There's a bunch of things that don't work. There's a few things that do. Right. Um, I know, you know, Dan Kennedy talks about, you know, the, the number one sin of marketing is being boring. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, well, actually, I would say the number one sin of marketing is not doing any. And number two is probably being boring. Yeah. So so if you're doing it, so number one is market. Number two is be interesting when you market. So, uh, all right, I guess the interview's done. I've got a picture of your book. No. <laughs> yeah, we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we just, we've just eliminated 99% of marketing efforts, by the way, in those two statements. You know, either they're not doing it or they're doing it in a manner which doesn't get cut through. So why let's, – let, let's start with, with your number one. Why don't businesses market? I don't think they know how to. I, don't, I think if they really knew how to, uh, then they'd find it relatively simple and relatively easy to actually do the marketing itself. And there's a lot of fear around marketing, isn't there? There's a lot of fear of personal rejection. There's a lot of psychology around it. Um, so that, that's a big reason why people don't do it, is they don't know how to do it, or if they th- think they know how to do it, which is very often erroneous. Uh, you know, Mark Twain said, it's not the things that we don't know that hurt us. It's the things that we think we know that just ain't so. Right. So they have a whole lot of misinformation. Um, and often, I think often it doesn't feel right for them. 
and they've got the sixth sense that says, well, that's probably bullshit. Um, but the guru says I should do it. So maybe I should. So, um, I, t- I tell you the biggest reason where let's assume that people know they really know what they should be doing. And the truth of the matter is, and this took me 35 years to figure out, unfortunately, the truth of the matter is that you and I and everyone listening to this wake up every single day and they do what they want to do. Every single day we wake up and we do what we want to do. Some days we wake up and do what we should do. And so if every day we wake up, we do what we want to do in the context of business, that's typically talking with people, uh, particularly if we can talk about our own products or services, we like doing that. We want to do that. But if, only some days we wake up and we do what we should do, what we think we should do, then the marketing efforts become inconsistent. So the results become inconsistent. And that's probably kind of pointing out the bleeding obvious, but but it's not commonplace. So any marketing system, therefore, if, if, you, if you agree with that theory that every day we wake up and we do what we want to do and only some days we wake up and do what we should do, anytime you look at a marketing system, you think, well, I should do that. I should blog today or I should stalk people on LinkedIn today or I should figure out this crazy Facebook funnel advertising today, then we won't do it consistently. And, and that is really at the nub of almost all failed marketing intentions. So I know some are listening and saying, I, I know some days, some days I'm not doing what I want to do. Some days the wheels fall off. Some days the ads aren't running. Some days the person I hire to run the ads isn't doing his job, so I got to jump in. Right. Some days the the widget that connects the website, we, the webinar opt-in to the <laughs> CRM, to the Zapier, to the shopping cart, to the trigger, to add them to the um, learning management portal so they can begin right. isn't working. Right. And, and so you should do that. And so you feel you have to do it. Right. But well, you don't you have to do that. Yeah. But you don't want to do it for sure. So you don't do it every day. Well, fortunately <laughs> the wheels don't all fall off every day. Right. Um, all right. So, and, and, and to be fair also, whereas most people aren't, don't have your level of infrastructure and support and they haven't developed the business model to the point that you have. Yeah. Um, so, so, so they fall in the comfort zone, right? Kind of like the, you, you go get golf lessons and you learn how to cure your slice, but when the, when yeah. the pressure's on, yeah. you, so, so you well, resort to your old grip and your old stance. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So people start going to business networking meetings or they think that $20 a day on Facebook advertising, well, I'm going to do something, right? And yeah, doing something is better than doing nothing. But um, unless the marketing model has people doing what they want to do, then it either doesn't get done or becomes inconsistent at best. And mostly I'm, you know, mostly I'm dealing with solopreneurs. So they're individual consultants, business coaches, et cetera. They don't have a lot of, they're not Ryan Dice. You know, they're not Dan Kennedy. They don't have this big marketing machine behind them. They don't have that sort of budget. Um, So with what I recommend people do is they have a system where they just simply wake up on every Monday morning, they look at the calendar and they see, inbound new client inquiry bookings. And so while they sip their coffee, they have a smile on their face because the, the, the leads are coming in and they haven't had to go out and chase it. And they haven't had to do online funnels or complicated tripwires or uh, CRM APIs uh, and all of the other stuff that is probably common commonplace to, to what you do. They simply wake up in the morning, they deal with new client inquiries and they present once a week online to a group of people who are fairly well qualified. That's it. That's the model. It's simple. Um, and it aligns people with doing what they want to do is, which is talking to people about their products or services. So sounds good. Gotta be some tricks though. Gotta be some tricks. Well, there's, there's no tricks. Way. There's tricks, but there's no trap. So, so the hard part is setting it up. Um, so if you think about, think about all the people running around the States right now in North America, and now you've got a global audience anywhere in the world, and they're going to meetings and they're hiring conference halls and trying to get warm bums on seats, whatever they're doing. They're going to networking meetings. They're going to trade shows. Uh, but, but they're out there traveling three-dimensionally. And that's time-wise, that's incredibly expensive. 
uh, energy wise, it's expensive. Financially, it's very often very expensive. So I'm sitting here on the sand of little castaways beach, uh, which hardly anyone in Australia has heard of, let alone outside of Australia. Um, and I can generate, and I can show my clients how to generate the same thing inbound new client inquiries. So how's, how's it all done, right? So this, this, is, this is how we do it. Every client of mine has a very simple KPI that once a week they conduct, they host an online meeting. It may not be a webinar. Everyone thinks it's training webinars. We don't do training webinars. So once a week they conduct an online meeting and they share with their audience how they work with their clients. It's a very direct value proposition. If you want to know, for example, how, to, how we generate leads and bound leads, come along to my session. It's Thursday, 9 a.m. here in Australia. And you can find out how we generate clients. If you have an interest after that, we can talk. But there's nothing to buy. Leave your credit card at home. And by the way, there's no replay. And it's not a training webinar. We're just going to show you how we do what we do. So whether that's a consultancy or a corporate trainer or an architect, you can do exactly the same thing. And now you've got an audience of people who have expressed a direct interest in what you do. Not in a training webinar, which we all know is really just a sales trap in disguise, but it's a direct, honest, transparent, genuine value proposition, which most people feel pretty comfortable about that. So that's once a week. Uh, and we can talk about where the audience has come from in a moment. Once a week, that is the KPI. You're talking to people who have a, registered a direct interest in what you do. Yeah. So, so everyone knows from there, some people are going to put their hand up and say, Hey, where's, can we, can, can I reach out? Can we book a time to speak? And then they get the link. So I have, a, you know, every single client, I say, get, get the link. Mine is book a chat with Tom.com, but get it, get the link, book a chat with Sue.com, get the link, book a chat with and redirect that page, put a landing page up there. So people are clear on what will happen when you meet with your, these people are making inquiries, but then once they accept that, those terms and conditions redirect them to your booking, your online booking page and bingo, you've got your consults coming in every week. No way, man. We need metadata. We need tags. We need <laughs> tripwires. We need APIs. Oh. We need webinars on demand. We need one penny right. tripwires to uh, an yeah. upsell, to a Funnels. downsell, to yeah. a hundred thousand dollar mastermind. To right, right. You've been there, done that. Didn't like it. It's okay. it's too it's too complicated, Wiz. Because you need a fancy webinar. I have to tell my story. I have to build empathy. I have to maybe even cry a little bit. Yeah, got to be multimedia. But it's, aren't we all just so turned off by you know the photo, the family photo with the kids at prep school and how little Johnny broke his leg, and there am I with the hospital bed next to him. What a great dad, or what a great mom, and I am. Mate, it's bullshit. People didn't come to hear about what a great family guy I am. You know, they didn't. They didn't. They come to get the real oil. Let's just give them the real oil. Let's stop dicking around with them. And yes, you've got to do the smart. And yes, they need to know why they should listen. We have a sequence. We walk people through. Why, why listen to me? Good question. Let me answer that question. And here's my bio. But by the way, you should not listen to me because I have spoken on speaking platforms around the world and multiple best-selling authors, blah, blah, blah. Here's why you should listen to me. Here's a few client results. These are fair dinkum, as we say here in Australia, genuine results. Bang, one slide. Bang, two slides. Bang, three slides. Not 20 minutes of freaking client testimonials because they don't need that. And then let's, let's tell folks what they've probably already tried and why that didn't work. So they go, ah, yeah, he's right. I tried that and it didn't work. And that's why it didn't work. And here's, here's what we do to generate results. I'm not going to hold anything back because where's the smart people get concerned. And I've heard it before. Tell people what they need to do, but don't tell them how to do it. Right. Well, I tell people what they need to do. I tell them how they need to do it. And I said, don't be stupid enough to think you can do this on your own. You're going to need a hand with this. You know, it took me 37 years to figure this out. So don't think you're going to sit in a 35 minute lead generation demo and know how to do it. It's like, I watched, just watch Rafa and Nadal kick some butt in the French open and I turn to my wife and go, I've seen how Rafa does it. I think I'll go on the pro tennis tour. You know, we know how that's going to end, right? Forehand, backhand, <clears throat> and you serve. I mean, what, <laughs> yeah, what could be out about else? that? <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> so, so what, I, what, what, what I want to do in the marketing world is I want to revolutionize it by stripping away all the bullshit, all the facades, all the, the technical complications, all the expense, and just get down to the nitty gritty of, of what freaking will works and what people want. And at the end of that, online presentation, mine are only 35 minutes, people can 
the smart ones will the smart ones who have the money to be fair not everyone has enough money but the smart ones who have the money will reach out and say we should talk because i need your hand to implement the stuff and 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 the ones that don't have the money i just redirect them to our, our free stuff so they get something out of it as well valuable free stuff not you know just get them all sweaty and hot and wanting you but they can't afford it too bad so that that's the way it works so if if i'm understanding this right you're saying be uh honest and direct is that is that what you're saying i'm saying that 100 percent, but do it smart as well so yes you know don't don't you know honest and direct might be i like scratching my ear for half an hour while you look at me but it's not going to work right so you got to be smart about it you got to answer the presentation needs to answer all the questions that the, the the prospect has in their mind like as i said why listen to tom i mean what where are his credentials they need proof too they need to know shit this thing i can see how this would work now pe- people say that we've just got to tap down some people's unconscious emotions well yeah it's a good place to open the mind but smart people still need proof they need to rationally logically before the point of purchase make a decision that, yeah, I can see this working in my business. They also have to have obstacles removed, like, why should I trust you, Tom? And, and you know, I'm in marketing, right? There's no, you know, Seth Godin wrote that book, All Marketers Are Liars. And I was, I was mildly offended when I saw that. How could that be a bestseller? I'm a marketer. Seth, take it all back. But the more I'm in this game, the more I realize he's so close to the truth. It's, it's sad but, and, and funny at the same time. Um, so why should people trust me? And, and, you know, how many times have we done this where so we listen to someone, some hotshot who says, I'm really good at what I do. Trust me, give me your money and I'll give you the real oil. And you hand over your hard earned and three months later, all you've got to show for is an empty bank account balance. This is universal. This is ubiquitous. This is everyone's experience. This, and this happens three, four, five, six times. And we got sick of it. We got sick of the guy who says, trust me, give me your money. Here's all these great testimonials. This will be great for you. This is step up, you know, hand your money over. Three months later, all you got to show for is the empty bank account balance. So, so what, I think what we got to do is stop saying, trust me. We got to start saying, if I'm asking my audience to trust me, why am I not trusting them? Why, why is it good enough for me to say, trust me? And I go, but I'm not trusting you. Give me your money first. So what I do is I say, don't trust me. I'll trust you. I'll, I'll give you full access to my stuff. I'll meet with you every single week personally. And don't pay me a cent. At the end of the month, you can decide if I'm the real deal or not. Now, that's the sort of, that's the sort of strategy that's a smart strategy, I think, I hope, well, it seems to be working, that we have to do to take away the barrier during the online presentation in the mind of the client who says, why should I trust you? You say you're passionate about whatever, big deal. Frankly, don't really care how passionate you are about my business. I care about if you can help me transform it, right? So strip away all the bullshit. Speak to the elephant in the room, which is they don't want to trust you, frankly, hoping that you're the real deal. Um, And give them some clear evidence of what you have as works in, in rational, logical terms and take away all the reasons why they shouldn't do business with you. Then you might get some new clients coming in. So you work for free for a month? No, I let people decide at the end of that month if I should be paid or not. I still want to be paid for the month, but they can pay up to 33 days. I give them full, complete access. So, so I, always, I, 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 work, I meet with clients every week, right? Physically, person, not physically, but online like this, like a right. call like this. And I'll do that once a week, and I'll answer their questions um, four days a week off, you know, out of that meeting in an online portal. And at the end of the month, um, their payment is already set up. So they've already entered their credit card details. But at any point during the 33 days, if they don't think I'm the real deal, then they can cancel. And whereas I don't hold anything back, they get full access to the whole system from day one. If someone wanted to, they could go and download everything and say, goodbye, Tom, and never see you again. But I trust people. And you know what? 97% of people honor their commitments. Yep. And 3% rip me off. Yep. That's, um, that's been my experience. Mm. Very low single digit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that happened with eBay, right? When eBay started, everyone thought that I would sell you junk and you would pay with a bad check for it. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, and, this, <laughs> and this like escrow company was created to, 
you know, hold the money and, and, and set it aside, blah, blah. And then they went out of business because there was no need. Interesting. People were pretty much honest. All right. You know, and sure, now, now there's ways just to file a formal complaint. But I've, I was buying and selling, at least buying on eBay as early as um, late 98. So 20 hmm. years. Hmm. I bought my wife like a little figurine for oh, her. I'm so glad you didn't put a full stop after the word wife. <laughs> I did not buy a wife online. No, uh, but I, I've bought a car online. I've purchased, I've bought $10,000 worth of gold. Wow. 14, thir- 13 years ago, th- mm. 14 years ago, um, all on eBay. Right. Mm. And I, I don't think I've ever been ripped off. I mean, I, I've sold multiple iPhones. I bought MacBook pros. So mm. yeah, people, they don't, um, by and large, People are going to do the right thing. You treat them right. Exactly. They'll treat you right. They exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's cool. That's my experience as well. Yeah. Now, do you are you streamlining your offers? You know, saying, "Look, here's the way I help," and like, you know, uh, I have an online program, and you get some consulting, and or do you have like a silver gold platinum offering? No, it's it's pretty simple, um, and I don't have a mastermind group, and some people don't like that, but you know, I don't want to do it, so I don't do it. Um, so I have two programs, essentially. Well, it's three, really. I mean, there's a free one because whilst I'm not Mother Teresa, I do like to help people that, that need a hand and can't afford. And then there's the $300 a month program and a $1,500 a month program. So but it's so everyone comes through a consult. No one can buy online uh, because I want to make sure that the people are, that are paying me money, I can actually help uh, and because I don't want the aggravation you know, of, of people who aren't getting value. And then I can direct them. I can go, okay, you're a $300 a month client or, um, you know, you're a $1,500 a month client or whatever. And, and every now and then it's an enterprise plan, which is 25000 a month, but they don't come too often. Though. But, hey, if you don't have one, you don't sell one, right? Sure. Um, but everyone comes through a consult, and I, and I think we've got a duty of care as marketers. If it's a $97 product, that might be different. But, you know, one-off 97 download this home study course, that might be different. But... I think we've got a duty of care as, as, as marketers and as people who provide the value to be to demonstrate care and concern for people after they've paid the money. Because my, oh my, there is a bunch of people out there that think it's all about making the sale and what the heck happens after that is they don't really seem to care too much about it. I thought we are just supposed to get their money Mm. and then like <laughs> go rent a Lamborghini and take a picture in front of it. Yeah, yes. Rent one. Hell no. Just borrow one, man. <laughs> you're, waste, you're wasting money on that marketing strategy. Or have my photo taken in the New York penthouse suite overlooking, you know, <laughs> talk, Central Talk Park. to my real estate friend to let me in the door yes, of the big house. That's so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the pool. Oh, actually, better still, my real estate friend is far more better looking than I am. So, hell, I get his picture in the, in the apartment. I don't have to drive there. You're, you're, you're wasting money here every turn, Wes, honestly. You know, you should be far better at your deceptive practices. Golly. And and we can joke about this because your reputation is second to none for integrity. But unfortunately, there are a lot of good-looking guys and good, you know, deep-voice-sounding guys like you out there that are – they have. I, I, it's caveat emptor marketing. That's what I call it. You know, that old Latin phrase, buyer beware, caveat emptor. And it's like mm-hmm. I've got this cardboard box, you know, I've got a label on it. The label says gold. You give me your money, I'll give you the box, okay? People hand over their money, they get the box, they open the cardboard box, and it's fool's gold. You go, hang on, this is fool's gold. Um, yeah, sucker, I got your money, I'm smarter than you, you got the fool's gold. Um, right. And that, you know, online courses, you know, downloadable online course, good luck, pal. And yeah, there's a couple of things in there, but there's no system, there's no step by step, I can implement this now. There's 97 d- different ways to get clients, you know, download it now. And one of them is an email signature or one of them is a post an article on LinkedIn. Um, right. None of them work. Um, and, and, and by the way, the author who sold you this download isn't doing it themselves because it doesn't work. But so there's caveat emptor marketers. Um, so everyone, and it doesn't matter if someone's listened to this as a architect or a consultant, that lack of trust it, they've been burnt. You know, it's not their first rodeo. They've fallen off the horse before. They don't want to do that again. So what are you going to do other than words that demonstrate that they can trust you, that you are going to deliver the value? 
that question needs to be answered in that 35 minute online presentation. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting that you, I mean, I love this approach because I've, I keep seeing this where somebody that they'll have the thousand dollar program and you get it. And it's like, all it does is get you excited. And, <laughs> oh, well, you got to come to the boot camp. Oh, uh-huh, right. Okay. You go to the boot camp. And guess what? And the boot camp is good, but then you realize you need the $10,000 program mm. to really get going. And you get in the mm. $10,000 program, you realize I need a, I need five different pieces of software and two VAs to make mm. this work. And oh, there's a VIP plan Yeah, on, on top of that. And it's like, I, I've literally never been able to structure that. Cause it's like, I just want to give, I, I, I probably shot myself in the foot for years, maybe still to this day. Cause like, I just want to give, like, I just, I just talk, I teach, like I want to mm. help people. And it's like, uh, and it's like, it's, it's not that easy. Right. It, it, it's more than a forehand, a backhand and a big, powerful serve. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm just honest and tell them that, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's not always simple, easy and fast. And if anyone's telling you it's simple, easy and fast, and just trust me, give me your money and I'll show you how it's simple, easy and fast. And they're a bullshit artist and you should run a hundred miles from them. And even, even worse than that scenario you pictured with, you know, with the thousand dollar course and then there's the boot camp and then there's the blah, 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 is then your friend who's in the same mastermind group as the marketer whispers to you and says, they're going broke. Mm. And they're scrambling around and they're desperate to get money in. And, yeah. you know, I'm in a mastermind group. I know guys that are sometimes losing $60,000 a month because they've got this big machine. Well, I know. I know, uh, I yeah. know people going through that right now. Yeah, and that's, that's tough, and, and they're going bro- – And but on the outside, they're still marketing programs and courses, and, look, I'm not saying I blame them. I mean, I've you've be, all been in difficult situations probably. If you're my age, you've been in some difficult situations. You get tempted, um, but it's you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to be able to sleep at night. I am a believer in karma. Call it reaping what you sow, whatever. Um I'm not a believer in giving everything away because I've still got, you know, bills to pay like everyone else and holiday dreams and all the rest of it. But create something that is genuinely valuable, that is free. The way I see it is if I can give something to people who are broke, something for free that's actually going to work, they only get some money in, they'll be interested in my next course, right? Sure. So, so it's, I think it was um, Gandhi perhaps who said there was no completely selfless no it's the dalai lama there's no completely selfless motivation in the world we we cannot give something away without getting something back um but yeah do unto others yeah sure Mm. so how do you i guess the, the next question is how do you scale this right because if you're still offering um a one hour is a one hour a week one hour a month private yeah, it's, it's, I, I run small groups. That's what I like to do. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty scalable. How do I scale oh, it? Yeah. It's not a one-on-one call. No. A group call. It's a group call. Okay. And that's how I scale it. And, right, right. and the key to delivering value in a scalable manner is to act like you're Henry Ford and break the process down into a series of tiny steps. Right. Um, the conversation I had this morning with, with a client is, you know, well, how do you scale the thing? You know, how do I get what I know out of some mighty head? And break it down into a series of time. Well, how do I scale it? Well, the answer is you break it down to a series. I mean, there's Henry Ford pumping out 30 cars a year per man. Whereas Packard, his nearest competitor, was doing three. Uh, Ford was charging half the price for his cars. They were more reliable. And he was paying his workers double what Packard was. First guy to introduce the, the five, $5 workday. Um, and he could do that simply because he broke the value, the assembly process down to a series of small steps. And, and mm-hmm. so that's what I do. So, uh, in fact, Whereas I give every client, whether they're on the kind of the, the less expensive program or the more expensive, they all get my mobile phone number. And I give it to every single one. And I say, I'm giving you this because you probably never need it. Because we've, we've broken the steps down into step-by-step example, sample, action item, bang, do your action item, upload it to our private room. Let me have a look at it. I get into the weeds with every client. And, but hey, if, if, 
if you feel neglected, if you feel ignored, yeah, ping me. We'll, let's talk one on one. We do that occasionally with clients. Have a one on one, but most of them don't need it. Um, so it's very scalable. I have clients in uh, London, Madrid, Berlin, the uh, ooh, Philadelphia, Dallas, Texas. Uh, I've even got How a couple. How do you get in their business if it's a group call? It, do you just do like little hot seats or whoever volunteers to ask a question and share a screen, <laughs> break them down? Well, we do it. We do a live Q and A. <clears throat> but one one of the reasons that I can that I can get into the business, so to speak, is that I'm selective about who I take on board because I can't help everyone and I can't work with a retailer effectively and at the same time work with a business coach because they're completely different offerings. One's a physical sure. product, one has a store, one doesn't. So I only work with people who are marketing the invisible. And because it's intellectual property they're marketing, there are a lot of common denominators which make it pretty easy for me to apply a template, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Very cool. So you have, I've got your book, uh, Leadsology. We're going to link to that uh, as well. You've got a couple of websites. Um, got leads, leadsology.guru, right? Yes, which is G, you are you. Well, I mean, some people say it's W E S, but you know, I, I, I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Modesty well, would forbid you for even suggesting it. Uh, so is that where we should send people? I know you mentioned like the, the chat with me type things, but those yeah. are more steps. Uh, but yeah. there they can learn. I, I've been on your site. Uh, I, look, I, I, if, if, if folks are wanting to dip their toe in the water of the world of lesology, www.5hourchallenge.com is probably a really good place to start. Okay. Fivehourchallenge.com gives them a 10 minute training video every day. If they add to that 50 minutes of action items, they've got one hour a day over five days that should generate five fresh leads and hopefully one new fee paying client. That's one place to go. I mentioned uh, book a chat with Tom.com. They are for people who are seriously interested in talking about implementing something in their business. Otherwise go to the website you mentioned leadology.guru. Have a play around there. Lots of free stuff on there. Right. Um, so I am linking to that as we speak. Uh, so final question. Are, are, are you ready? I was born ready. Oh, you Aussies. You all. Bring it on. I'm a cocky have you, Aussie. Have, I don't think you've met, met a Texan yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to lock Longhorns. Uh, so, so our listeners, some are traveling. They might be on a mountain bike. Can't take notes right now. Can't apply <laughs> anything. But what should they do? What's the first thing they should do after listening to this? What takeaway, what should they apply uh, to move the needle and make more sales as a result of this episode? Well, the answer is not a direct one. The answer is they should sit down and think about what marketing they want to do. And they should immediately discount or eliminate every other form of marketing because they won't do it consistently. And if you're not doing something that you want to do, you either don't do it consistently and therefore your results are inconsistent or you don't do it at all. So anything that doesn't feel like it's something they want to do, they should get rid of it. So, and I, and I know that's not giving you a direct answer in terms of what should they do, but very often great clarity comes from figuring out what you don't want to do first. Sure. So let me turn this around on you then. Let's say I, I don't want to do... Facebook live streaming, uh, for example. But in my niche, uh, there's a lot of people on Facebook and, and maybe I could reach them. Yeah, should so, I, should mm -hmm. I learn to like it because that's where the prospects are or are the ideal prospects somewhere else? And I just haven't taken the time to figure out where they are and how to reach them. All right. With, so with so the my, style that I like my prospects are on Facebook and Facebook, Live, therefore, would be a good idea. So, but the enemy of great strategy is the good idea. If, if doing a Facebook Live is like one inch outside your comfort zone, then hell yeah, you know, grow a pair and go and do it. But if it's so bad that like a friend of mine was physically vomiting at the very thought of it, then no, you should not do it. Because whilst it's a good idea, it's the enemy of great strategy. So figure out another way. There will be another way. Right. Because those same people are somewhere else. Yes, they are. Right? They don't They're exist. Out. They are, 
information somewhere else. Yeah, and finding people actually is the easiest part of the whole puzzle, Wes. It's, it's getting cut through and engaging them. That's, that's the trickier part. So, yeah. Well, unfortunately, you're right. People are everywhere. And I don't like very many of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like them all at a distance. <laughs> uh, almost all of them. Um, was it Mark Twain or one of those guys like, a, like a, I love humanity, but I hate people or something like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like Twain. The other thing I'd just, you know, perhaps add is that people think it's that marketing is about finding your ideal clients. And if I could just maybe add a little tease or a little tip to that, it's not about finding your ideal clients. It's about finding the people who have your ideal clients. That's where the smart money is. Finding people that have your ideal clients? Yeah. So there are, particularly in the USA, North America generally, there are a massive number of people who have private email subscriber lists. And this is a, if you do it right, this is a completely free and inexhaustible supply of prospects. You can go fishing with a fishing line and catch a fish, or you can go fishing with a trawler with a net in someone else's pond and catch a buck load of fish. So you're talking about like affiliates or. Well, I, I, I call them, I call, you know, you've heard of OPM, other people's money and OPT, other people's time. I call this OPN, other people's networks. And True. so identifying people who have a significant size list of, of, you know, I've done a great job of nurturing the list and added value to them. Hell, I'm talking to one right now, yeah? Sure. So identifying those people and creating a level of rapport, respect, relatability, and reciprocity, and I've chosen those four words very carefully, rapport, respect, relatability, and reciprocity, that that opens doors to other people's networks, and you don't need to pay affiliate commissions, and you don't need to pay any advertising costs. Um, you just help each other. So if you know that little secret source recipe, then you've just established an inexhaustible supply of high quality leads that really can be completely free of, of any money changing hands. Um, and yet people run around booking conference centers and paying affiliate commissions and paying advertising costs. And it is really all unnecessary. Right. There's a lot of people majoring in the minors. Yeah. I guess because they haven't figured out, you know, the formula, I suppose. Right. But now they have. It's called well, mythology. The scene Rafael Nadal play tennis. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, this has been awesome. So Tom Poland, all the way from Australia. Thanks for uh, taking time to share your words of wisdom. Well, it's a real privilege to be here, Wes. Uh, hold your work in high esteem, and it's delighted, delighted to be on your show. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, it's been my pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you. Ciao. We all wake up and do what we want to do. Sometimes we do what we should do. If that doesn't hit you right between the eyes, I don't know what will. Um, as I warned you at the beginning, this was a great episode. Uh, Tom is a smart dude. He's a humble dude. Uh, he's a successful dude. Uh, creating a business, a lifestyle that is um, by design, right? The lifestyle that he wants. Um, not hustling. You won't see him creating all kind of crazy social media posts and spending money on a lot of ads. He has perfected a system, you know, $94,000 in a week. That's a good week. So there's a lot to learn here. A lot. Um, you need to probably go back and, and re-listen, check out the notes uh, that I've typed up on the site, get his book, you know, and, and apply, apply what you've learned. Uh, and I'm, I'm doing the same thing of, uh, I'm modifying my approach, um, modifying my webinar, um, changing up how I'm reaching out and connecting with people because I've tried so many things, you know, I love how he talks about, it, it took him 35 years to figure this out. So I don't feel so bad being 48 and figuring things out. You know, you're always testing, always, um, trying to beat your best performing ad, your best campaign. And uh, I like his approach. You know, it, it resonates with me. So that's what you've got to do. Find someone whose style, whose approach, you know, whose 
uh, values uh, resonate with you and emulate them, you know, because success does leave clues. So don't go reinventing the wheel. Find out someone who already invented the wheel that you like and use that design. Okay. You know, that's what I'm doing in the make every sale course. Uh, I'm going to start doing uh, live weekly uh, webinars. And it's really not a webinar. I learned it from Tom. It's, it's a private, semi-private demo conversation. Very short. Uh, only eight people uh, can attend at a time. I'll let 16 register because I know about half uh, will show. So as soon as eight are in, I'll lock the meeting. Uh, very short. Nothing to sell. You know, it's uh, talk about how I work, uh, and it's helping me, you know, learning from Tom, helping me really tighten up my offers. You know, I want to sell software, uh, support people on it, and do sales training. And the most effective way that I can do sales training is through the Make Every Sale program. You know, seven weeks of formal training, going through the workbook, 41 videos, uh, with two weeks of Q and a, you know, unstructured, just taking your questions. I take the questions anyway. Uh, we always go about an hour and then I hang around for up to 30 minutes. If you have questions on whatever, um, you know, Gina has been very active helping her with uh, an RFP. Um, she brought that up in, um, yesterday's call, you know, what should be included in an RFP. Um, I helped her with a trade show, um, she was attending a conference and she had questions on how to engage prospects at that conference. And she said it was a huge success. Uh, she's been very vocal as well in how she's been using the sales agenda to set firmer meetings. I think she closed a two and a half million dollar deal. Uh, and this RFP she's working on is 400 or $450,000 and following the agenda is helping her set better meetings that are leading to faster sales without doing a bunch of demos and big dog and pony shows. Uh, Jim was talking about how he did not use the sales agenda, which is, uh, I think it's on page 53 right now in the workbook, but he did not use it. He showed up to a meeting and the lady said, Hey, remind me again why we're meeting, you know? So that's the kind of, of vulnerability people are offering up in the group. You know, he admitted that was a mistake and he learned from it. Um, and, you know, like we said in the military, the more you bleed in training, the less you bleed in combat. And it's the same thing in sales. How much are you training? How much are you, you know, getting bloody noses, you know, virtually as we work on your prospecting and your opening lines and what have you? Um, if you think you'll just rise to the occasion when the money is on the line, you are mistaken. It doesn't happen that way. You will revert back to the level of your training. So how good is your training? I guarantee you, if you're in my training, it's going to be very good. So come join us, makeeverysale.com. Seven weeks of formal training, two weeks open Q&A, 41 videos, 60 plus pages, 70 plus pages now, workbook. And I'm adding to it more and more. There's supplements, there's, there's spreadsheets for time tracking and goal setting. Um, I've got an entire separate um, prospecting flow chart with scripts and alternates uh, that's also included. So, I mean, it's probably 90 pages, maybe a hundred pages of content. And, but I walk you through it, you know, and you get the feedback. So come on over and join us. Okay. If that's not your style, if you're more of a reader, please check out 79 stories.info. That's my second book. It takes more than a big smile, a good idea and a Twitter account to build a business that lasts. Uh, check that out. If you buy five or more, uh, there's a discount as well on that same site. But uh, when you order, you'll get an autographed copy from me. So go ahead and avail yourself of that. I promise you'll like it. Like Omari says, a good friend of mine, Omari Broussard, owner of 10X Defense, he says, one word, profound, all caps. This book has done more than you know for me right now. How do you like them apples? Good old Omari. Navy man moved to... Uh, Moved to Austin, left me, left me here in SoCal, moved to my adopted hometown of Austin. Oh, well, gives me somebody to visit when I go back. But that's uh, 79stories.info. Uh, and I've been mentioning as well, you know, if you're looking for a keynote speaker, I am open. I will travel for food and bourbon and a little money 
Okay. But look, super affordable. Uh, every attendee gets a copy of my book when I am, am brought in to speak. I will custom tailor it to your, to your audience, to the theme of your show. So it's uh, hirethebestspeaker.com. Check that out. Uh, you can contact me there. We can talk about it, see if it's a fit. And, um, you know, sales meetings, marketing uh, meetings, uh, regional meetings, uh, especially if you're running an association, you know, 400 to 1,000 people or so. Uh, I will also stick around and help with any kind of breakout session, maybe later in the day or the next day. So, you know, I get very involved in my sessions, in my talks. So I want to help you have a, a great talk. So if you know somebody uh, running an event, they need a great speaker, somebody that uh, can be relevant, be a little bit humorous, can be a little bit serious, um, and certainly up to date, then I am your guy. Uh, finally, the free resource. I don't know if I mentioned it lately, but uh, the Implementors. Dot com the implement tours that's our free group on facebook uh just continue the conversation come hang out let me know you're there all right and if you leave a five-star review and take a screenshot and email me wes at the sales com, i will send you a pdf version of my sales training flashcards uh, the physical version sells for 20 bucks so uh you get the exact one but uh you get it as a, a pdf so give me a review five stars let me know and it's yours. All right. Thanks for listening. Now go sell something. <laughs>